You know, Fortnite has been a dominant force in the gaming world for a few years now, right? And during that time, Epic has made you know, quite a few decisions that a lot of the pro and even the casual community don't even really agree with. You know, from introducing overpowered weapons to competitive, down to removing certain settings and even adding bots into their game. You know, it's safe to say that Epic doesn't always make the best decisions regarding their game. But your crunch Sami, where you at your motivation guy? Yeah, that's right, I am back. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over six more times that Fortnite got the game totally wrong. You guys ready for this? Let's get this going. The C4, also known as the remote explosive, was a type of explosive weapon that could be thrown onto any object multiple times with the ability to then detonate them, you know, whenever you wanted at the press of a button. And so when these remote explosives were first added to Fortnite, people were not happy. You know, the blast radius on these things was simply overpowered. You know, back when OG, you know, Tilted was still in the game, you could blow up the entire main building just by exploding about three or four remote explosives at the bottom. And that is how destructive these things actually were. Now you can imagine like how annoying this could be in late game scrims when seemingly everything being built is just getting blown up by remote explosives. And believe it or not, man, like that's not even the only overpowered thing about these items. Like you could also stack up three to four remote explosives on the outside of an opponent's box. And when they explode it, it would just instantly eliminate whoever was in that box because all four remote explosives would just go off at the exact same time, multiplying the splash damage. And so the first remote explosive would break through the walls and then the remaining three would add up and just do 210 damage in total, killing the enemy no matter what health they were on. All in all, like the remote explosive was an overly aggressive and powerful item that was far too unbalanced to stay in the game. Like soon enough, Epic realized their competitive mistake and vaulted them, which people were very happy about. Let me ask you this, do you guys wanna succeed in Fortnite, even when Epic Games makes questionable decisions? Well, ProGuys.com is exactly where you wanna be. We've got master classes from the best pros in the business, like Mongrel and Clicks, that will teach you everything that you need to know about playing like a pro. Don't have the time for that? All right. With our innovative vibe review system, all you need to do is really upload your replays and our pro coaches will do the rest, giving you in-depth feedback about all your mistakes and how to improve on them. All you need to do to start your journey to the top is click the link in the top right of the video. If you didn't know already, Epic used to do patch notes, which were extremely helpful for everybody who played the game, especially for content creators and streamers and pro players. You know, let people know exactly what was going on behind the scenes. Epic even used to include explanations and reasons which justified why certain items had been changed, added, or even vaulted. And so these explanations felt very genuine and transparent at the time. And we think, you know, everyone was just grateful for the extra layer of justification when changes were made. Of course, this idea of transparency with Epic and the Fortnite community, it didn't last forever. You know, out of the blue, Epic completely removed all patch notes. But why? Some players believe it is a way to really stop people from reading the patch notes, not even playing the game, and then, you know, judging the changes made without trying it out properly. While this could be the case, it's not a good enough reason to completely just cut off, you know, the entire patch note system. And more recently, Epic has started putting some limited patch notes back up into Twitter, but these patch notes are honestly like tiny in comparison to the patch notes that they used to put out and really don't give us any explanations for the changes that they end up just pushing through into the game. And so while losing out on patch notes isn't exactly the worst thing in the world, it would be a good move for Epic to really just start adding their authentic and genuine explanations to the notes once again, so that we can just reestablish a positive way of communication from Epic themselves. You know, back in 2019, stress resolution was one of the most popular techniques uh, you know, pro players used to really improve and really help with their in-game fights. It was just pretty much used by every serious pro player, including Tfue and Mongrel and Martaz and, you know, many, many more. And so the reason, you know, so many different players used it was mainly because it just gave them an increased vertical field of view, which allowed them to see a lot more things on their screen at one time. And you can see why that would be a want for a game, you know, where verticality, you know, is one of the most used features in the game. And so the main argument against stretch res was that it made the game look worse for content and people watching the tournament at home. And so the game was definitely not designed to see that much at one time. So it makes the game look very distorted and sometimes even game people who, who watched it get headaches and motion sickness. 
Epic decided to completely ban stretch resolution in April, two months before the Fortnite World Cup. This meant that the pros who had already switched over to using stretch had gotten used to it and had now switched back and now had to readjust again just before the most important tournament of their lives. To this day, like stretch res is still banned from Fortnite competitive play and it's, you know, really impossible to get stretch. Hopefully, you know, in the near future, a new alternative like a custom, you know, FOV slider, you know, may be implemented. But unfortunately, there just hasn't been any word on anything like that coming anytime soon. All right, so Epic has had its fair share of like weird and questionable additions to the game. And one of those additions, which certainly stood out, was bots. You know, back before bots were initially in the game, the term bot was literally used as an insult to players who were typically bad at the game. Little did we know that in the future, we would actually be playing against AI. You know, AI players in Fortnite is not itself a bad idea, but it's just more the way, you know, Epic implemented this idea that starts to really raise some questions. Epic did not really disclose the fact that they added bots to the game thoroughly enough. And so when you were playing the game, players really just felt off and it just wasn't as rewarding. You know, the AI players were pretty much designed to farm materials and find weapons and then come to you and die for you, leaving you with all their mats and loot. You know, this gameplay at the time was extremely boring and not really rewarding or entertaining. And so the casual side of the game felt pretty much empty and broken. And so after some research, Cypher PK was actually able to expose that. And in one game he played, there was a grand total of 89 bots and only 11 normal players. I mean, that's not exactly what you want to see in a game that's meant to be multiplayer, right? So there was a heavy response from the Fortnite community in response to the addition of the game. And shortly after Epic removed the ability for you to just match with so many AI players. Sure, there are still bots in the game now, but there are definitely less of them, which makes the issue just a little bit less annoying. Put your questions to me. Okay, guys, it's time for the question of the day. Today, we want to know what you think Epic's biggest mistake was. Like, did they add an item you absolutely cannot stand or did they change something in the way that you really do see it now? Let us know in the comments down below because you already know we're going to check out every single one of them. All right, back to the video. Okay, so we all know how much pro players love their setups by now. Being able to have your designated keyboard and mouse that really fits your gameplay style so well is just a nice thing to have in general, right? I mean, they would never think to change our peripherals for no good reason. Well, that was the case until Epic decided that every single player competing in the TwitchCon skirmish event in 2018 had to use the exact same Logitech keyboard and mouse when playing in the tournament. And if that wasn't enough, all players must be using maxed out graphics with shadows on. Seriously epic. You know, most players can't even run max graphics without having their FPS drastically lowered, right? And while they were just playing on rigs set up by the tournament, those settings aren't anywhere close to optimal, meaning frame rates would still be lower than average. You know, it begs the question, like, why would Epic do this? I mean, sure, like, it technically makes the game look a bit more fancy, which might be good for viewers, but it also makes it harder to see players, and that just lowers the level of play. And so forcing everybody to change their mouse and keyboard setup just really speaks for itself. At that point, like it is no longer how good you are at the game, more about how well you can just do with a Logitech mouse. This rule was clearly designed to stop people from having a competitive advantage based on their peripherals, but really it would just have to have had, you know, the total opposite effect. If people had a Logitech mouse back at home, then they would just have more experience using one overall and would have the advantage. Luckily, these rules didn't stick around for long and Epic learned their lesson about restricting the peripherals that people could play on. You know, Fortnite is a game that is centered around positioning, especially when it comes to the ability to take high ground using your building skills and intuition. And so when that skill is replaced by an item that is based on the luck of whether you get it or not, it causes some extremely unfair scenarios. You know, we are, of course, talking about the grappler. <laughs> the idea of this item itself is extremely fun, at least for casual players and games. But in pro play, the item was definitely abused in the late game to really easily take the high ground. I mean, if you're on the low ground during the late game in a bad position and you suddenly find a grappler, like uh, you would definitely, I mean, you could disengage from any fight and simply just grapple away to high ground. I mean, you have the high ground. The grappler is a way to really just let less skilled players have a chance. And while that is not necessarily a bad thing, it just ruins the experience for more skilled players at the highest level of play. And that's why it's just one of Epic's greatest competitive mistakes and why we should never see it again in Arena. 
You know, unfortunately, mistakes are always gonna be made when it comes to developing one of the biggest games on the planet. Luckily, you know, mistakes are also critical to learn from, so each time Epic does make a mistake, it should make the game even better in the long term. Hey guys, if you guys liked the video, you already know what to do, subscribe to the channel. And if you want even more motivation, I'm right here. Connect to me on my Instagram at yourmotivationguy. Man, I'm so proud of you guys. Keep going. I'll see you soon.